Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Siddharth Goel, first year PG in the Department of Radio Diagnosis at Kalinga Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhubaneswar. The topic for my paper presentation is Evaluation of Lung and Mediastinal Masses by CECT and its Histopathological Correlation. So the basic aims of the study are to delineate the common locations where lung masses occur, characterize them into benign and malignant, and assess the extent of the uh, disease by CECT. Then we'll understand if there is any correlation or how many cases assess the sensitivity and specificity with the uh, histopathology, which is taken as a gold standard. So this is a descriptive study, which was done over a period of eight months in Bhuvneshwar at Pai Institute. Total 50 cases were taken. Statistical analysis was carried out with the help of Microsoft Excel. The CT machine used was a G Optima 64 slice CT scanner, which had a 5 mm slice thickness. Contrast was used wherever necessary with the help of UltraVist, which was put in a dual syringe injector. And the image was taken at 40 seconds post contrast injection and reconstructed with a slice thickness of 0.625 millimeter. A patient consent was taken and patient was informed about the procedures before only. Inclusion criteria. Inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria were as follows. Inclusion criteria were patient with lung masses who had undergone CECT and histopathology both at our institute. Whereas uh, uh, patients who agreed to undergo USG or CT guided biopsy in our institute following CECT were also taken into account. Exclusion criteria were patient in whom either CECT wasn't done or only histopath was done or either CECT was done or patient on which contrast could not be given as in patients who have contrast in sensitivity or abnormal RFT. So these were the spectrum of findings we assessed. We had assessed lesions both within the lung parenchyma and mediastinal lesion. Among the lung masses, most commonly we found was the lung cancer. And among lung cancer also, the incidence of adenocarcinoma was the highest. This was followed by the squamous cell cancer. Then around equal cases we saw for large cell carcinoma and non-small cell carcinoma. Then a lot of cases we saw of lung mass in the form of TB, which presented as a cavitatory lesion or isolated lymphadenopathy, which had, uh, turned out to be a mediastinal lymph node or TB lymphadenopathy. Among mediastinal masses, most commonly, um, again, we saw CA lung and teratoma cases. Among uh, media, uh, lung masses in the mediastinum, teratoma was the most common. So then we correlated our findings in CCT with that of histopathology and found that the sensitivity of CCT in diagnosing them is around 97% and I found that CCT is an ideal modality for at least sensitivity of the mass. Specificity and positive predictive value of CCT also when compared with histopathology it was taken as gold standard was found to be high. So these are just the delineation of the spectrum of lesions which we saw. As you can see, adenocarcinoma was the highest number of cases. This was followed by the squamous cell carcinoma. Then again, among mediastinal lesions, teratoma is turned, uh, turned out to be more common ones. Then infective etiology like TB was also there. Then again, spectrum of lesions on uh, histopath also had the same for, same as, the, as delineated by the CECT telling us that the CECT has a good capability of diagnosing these lesions. So in our study, total 50 cases were taken. Out of this, <clears throat> 30 turned out to around 30 turned out to be lung cashers. Of these, 18 cases were diagnosed as adenocarcinomas and 12 were diagnosed as squamous cell carcinomas. Amongst uh, mediastinal masses, most common was teratoma. The sensitivity, specificity and positive predictive value of lung masses in correlation of CECT with CCT was pretty high. It was 97%, 97% uh, sensitivity. Specificity was 94% and negative predictive value was 50. In our study, we also saw that uh, the common demographics in which this happens is the, usually the age group of 40 to 60 years. And a mean age was found to be 52 years. And majority of cases were more, it was more commonly seen in males and also more commonly associated with smoking. Then we did some cl uh, clinical correlation also and cuff and sputum production turned out to be the most common clinical presentations of these cases. Among benign lung masses, most of the cases 
out 66.6% showed homogeneous enhancement, whereas 33% showed a heterogeneous enhancement. Among malignant masses, most of them showed a heterogeneous uh, pattern of enhancement, and very rarely we saw any homogeneous pattern, very few, around 2% of cases. Among benign mediastinal masses, again, we saw a homogeneous pattern, and among malignant, again, same in mediastinal masses, we saw a heterogeneous pattern. Then, Common findings which were associated in malignancy were its central location, a rib invasion or mediastinal invasion is there. We'll see a irregular lesion with heterogeneous environment showing speculated margins. Or, uh, or and if it, uh, the lesion has smooth or lobulated margin with homogeneous enhancement, it will go towards benign. Then associated findings like pleural effusion, consolidation, collapse, cavitations were more commonly seen with malignant lesions. So the conclusion was that CECT diagnosis of lung and mediastinal masses corroborated with the histopathology in 45 cases out of the 50 cases and lung masses were more commonly seen in the upper lobe and medial mediastinal masses were more commonly seen in the anterior compartment. So because of its high sensitivity, specificity and PPV, uh, CECT was found to have a good diagnostic accuracy and was recommended as the modality of choice for diagnosis of lung and mediastinal lesion. However, in some cases, like in cases where we have to differentiate between TB and malignancy, histopath played a more important role in the, uh, differentiating between them. CECT was non-specific. These are my references. Thank you.